All right, in this video, this is actually for my memory as well as um, just a guidance for other people. We got here an ENE chip, 9028Q, and I'll show you how I was able to program it using RT809F. So, important pins to wire up are these ones. So, KSO3 is ground, KSI4 is cable select. KSI 7, data out. KSI 6, data in. KSI 5 is clock. Now, there's multiple ways to wire it up. This is the most direct way. And sometimes you can do this, sometimes you can't. There are other ways you can do through keyboard controller cable. Depends on the length. If you've got too much, too long length, like if the length is too long, like 15 centimeters all the way to the programmer, it may or may not work. Signals are not strong enough for long distance. So, I'll show you how I wire them up. Oh, by the way, so, um, I'll show you how to know where to wire it up. That's more important. You can either wire it directly on the SIO, uh, directly on the chip, or you can do it on the keyboard connector. To know where to do it, every or most models are different, but the pins on the ENE chip are pretty much the same. On the ENE chip, Important to know, KSO3 is actually pin number 42. So you got to ground pin number 42 of the Super IO. You've got to ground it. So I've got a wire here running to the ground. Okay? What that does when the chip is turned on with power and that pin number 42 is grounded, he knows he's, got, he's in programming mode. Cable select, KSI4 is pin number 59 of the Super IO. KSI 7 is data out. KSI 7 is of the Super IO. KSI 6 data in. KSI 6 is pin number 67. And lastly, clock KSI 5, which is number 6. And I'll show you how I know this. So I'll bring you a screen, full screen, of the board view. I don't know if you can see that. I'll make it so it's like this and maybe one second. This is a board view of a BIOS file, okay, of a motherboard. So this is my Super IO U2401. So this is the ENE 9028. Um, um, E&E, uh, most models share the same pin layout. So, for example, 9022, 9028 are all pretty much the same. So if you have a look at here, pin number 62, it pairs up with pin number 3 of the keyboard. This is the keyboard connector. And that's what I've basically done. So I've run the wires from here to my RT809F programmer. Or I could have directly done it here, but the gaps are too small and easy to touch between each other. So, 62 is data out. 61 is data in. 60 is clock. 59 is cable select. And we got 42 down the road. This one will need to go to the KSO3. We'll need to go to ground. So that's why I ran a wire from here directly to anywhere ground on the motherboard. That's the cable wire wiring. I'll show you on the microscope. But one more thing, I'll show you uh, some some schematics. I'll show you this. Some schematics on the Super IO like this will actually tell you what these pins are for. In this specific uh, schematics, it doesn't actually tell us, okay? Um, this is out of the blue. I'm getting, getting going out of the um, context, but I'll just check something here very quickly. E and E. Uh, one second, I'll be right back. Okay, sorry. <clears throat> I'm not going to go there because I think it's out of, um, out of the uh, scope for now. I haven't prepared. So, Going back to here, so you basically need to know which pins 
are going to the keyboard connector. You can also use continuity mode on your multimeter to find the link. Okay, coming back here, and I'll show you how it looks. It's a horrible cabling, because I'm, I tried so many things, I've given up, and, and I think this is a solution that works. So here I'll show you. I mean, it's actually very simple once you do it many times, but it's my first time. Yes, I've never done it before. This is my first time. Okay, I was given on RT, you know, uh, forums. I nearly got kicked out of there for asking a RT809F question. So here, this is how I ran the wires. So blue, red, but the colors don't matter. And then you should see the ground there on the bottom left. Okay, so. Um, not, this is not the best cable, this is only temporary. Okay, now that's that. And I'll show you the process of actually getting it to recognize on the RT809F. So, importantly, disconnect RT809F. So there's light there, as you can see. Make sure it's off. First thing you do, plug in the DC jack of your cable. The reason why you want to do that, and uh, uh, when there is power in the board, the super IO is actually always on. Uh, Damn it, wrong one. Okay, what happened here? Okay, it's a bit oversized. Okay. So multimeter, just literally any corner, most corners, you should see three volts reading somewhere. There we go. Just one of the corners of the super IO, it doesn't matter where. You just want to see 3 volt there. Then you know your super IO is on. Notice the power is still off. So I'm going to bring my RT809F uh, software. I'll show you on the laptop. And I will do a HDMI out so you can see clearly. Okay, HDMI out. Okay. Sorry about the screen sizes there. Okay, but you will see what I mean. So, it's best to close the program and open it again because this program is not most reliable. So, the program is opening up now. Okay, there we go. So, now the program is open. Now, I'm going to connect the cable. I've connected the cable to the computer. All right, it's connected. Light is on. Okay, retry. It should pick up the serial number of the programmer there when it's up and running. It should be up and running. Now I'm going to do auto ISP. Okay, so if you get anything detected, that's a good sign your cabling is fine. Now this one is a false detection because they're all pretty much similar. So I'm going to say 9028, as you can see it said OK. Now I'm going to say read. I can't believe it's working. I'm doing a first time demo and it's working. I'm going to cry of happiness. <laughs> OK, but this board actually needs programming, OK? So let's save a copy. I don't know why it needs one programmed I'm just assuming it does because I can't find anything else wrong with the board except uh, one of the power rails not coming up okay we'll call it old KB now um, let's go to so there's a KB available from Winifix let's quickly get that Uh, the model of this motherboard, I forgot. Oh, wait. Um, A5... Uh, SP513. SP513. 52. Uh, yeah. Yeah, this one. Is this the one? No, 52 is what we want. Okay. SP513.
I believe it was. No, okay. Yeah, sorry about this. Give me a minute. Uh, Fifty-two N. Okay, SP five one three. Fifty-two N. Is it five one three? Yeah. Damn, why can't I find the one I was looking for before? Is it a Vistron? No, it's a Woody. Sixteen nine two four. I am feeling like I'm an idiot. Okay, something's not right. Oh, here we go. Yeah, this is the one I was after. Here we go. Okay, that's where our ENA chip is. So what we're gonna do? Open. All right, right. I can't believe it. I'm actually writing a Super IO first time after over <laughs> hundreds of repairs. Well, this is my last resort for this motherboard. If this doesn't work, uh, I don't know what else will. So that's gonna be the end. Now don't attempt to start the board in this mode because we still got a ground of a cable which um, normally will have 3.3 .3 volts on. Okay, which is pin number 42. Okay, so we've reprogrammed the EC. Okay, let's cut the power from programmer. And let's go here. Here. Well, that was the end of this repair of programming uh, Super IO. Yeah, so I'm going to continue the recording in a separate video, which is the part about this laptop repair in progress. You can still watch that, so just Google the A, no, S513-52N. Okay, so thanks for watching. See you in the next one.